I am not a gunsmith, and so I never pretend to be a gunsmith. Uh, you're going to have subjective opinions probably down below in the comments. Um, I might turn off the comments because I don't want to I don't want to start any debate. It, you you can agree or you cannot. You know, this is my corner of YouTube. Um, I don't want a lot of debate. You know, I'm just trying to share information with folks who who might be struggling with this, you know, with what I was struggling with. Um, it's not always about fighting on YouTube and I don't I don't want to see nasty ass comments. You know, I, I just I don't want to spend my time even just glimpsing at them. So I will probably turn off the comments. Okay, so this is I got a lot I'm going to have a lot going on here so I am not scripting this or, you know, kind of following any notes in this case. And we might well have to divide up the footage into two or three videos. Um, but anyways, uh, what we're going to discuss today is the two 1911s here. And I have two behind me as well that I guess I took yesterday to the range to assess whether or not they would shoot this ammo. And all of these are with the exception of maybe this is um um self-defense ammo so i guess the idea was that i bought this new gun and this is an s so they're all cleared which is why the slides are open it's nothing in the magazines nothing in the chambers um so i bought this sds imports 1911 duty uh, in 45 ACP, maybe a month and a half, two months ago, uh, this is my first full-sized uh, 45 ACP 1911. Um, I enjoy it a lot, um, to the point to where, in a little under, I mean, not even two months, I have very close to four, uh, 500 rounds through it. Yesterday, I put maybe 480, 490. Uh, I've owned this gun for a while and I'm only now reaching the 500 round mark. And so right now they're neck and neck regarding round count. Uh, but you can, I mean, just based on the time I've owned both and the number of rounds I put through both, you can tell that this is becoming quickly becoming a favorite. Uh, and mainly because it's, it's a big hefty gun. Um, it's got a long sight radius. It's 45 ACP. Um, and so I've been shooting it and have noticed several things. I'm, I'm very, I can be very accurate with the gun. These two guns have the same exact types of sights. Um, but because of the sight radius, the longer sight radius, I believe, uh, I'm ac actually able to be more accurate and shoot, uh, longer distance. Uh, typically I don't shoot long distance. Uh, but I have noticed that it is easier for me to shoot longer distance with this gun and be accurate. Um, as well, uh, this was the first time I've actually decided to shoot JHP from a 45 ACP 1911. And it's because I had, and I guess I, I, I was going to say I had uh, planned on carrying this gun. So I've got a holster for it uh, inside the waistband. And the plan was, you know, since I uh, enjoyed the gun uh, and shot well with it, was to make it a carry gun. Uh, that is until I ran into issues with uh, it accepting a JHP. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and, in, and it's not only this one, it's this one. I never shot JHP through this gun either. And with both of these guns, I was seeing a lot of uh, failure to ex uh, not extract uh, failure to feeds. Uh, so both of these guns are imports. This is a Turkish gun. I know people love to hate Turkey. Um, and this is a Philippines made gun. Um, there are people out there who hate Filipino made gun. They hate anything that's not U.S. made. Uh, you know, they 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 type that from their phones on Facebook and using Reddit 
and even responding to YouTube, you know, uh, uh, reviewers. They do it on their phones. Their phones are built and made in China. You know, a lot of your, you, know, you can be the hardest cord American patriot. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a patriot as well. But uh, I'm not living in this dream world where I am only going to buy U.S. products. Uh, I buy what I feel is good for me. Uh, is this gun equivalent to uh you know and, and i've said this in uh in uh reddit i guess uh uh comments uh reddit posts you know in response to people kind of saying how uh turkish guns they're, they're crap but they don't say exactly why uh and they say the same thing about filipino made guns as well uh but they never elaborate so I've shot this gun and I, this is my fifth 1911. Uh, every single one of mine have been imports. Uh, before I bought this gun, I was looking for uh, Springfield Armory, uh, well, US made guns, but I was focusing on Springfield Armory because they have a, they have a strong set of guns uh, that are priced very well. Uh, and, um, you get a forged frame with them as well. Uh, this gun, I don't believe has a forged frame. Uh, none of my, uh, Rock Island Armory 1911s have forged frames. They're all cast. I believe this one's cast too, but I'm not finding a lot of information on it. Uh, the last thing I saw was that it may well be cast, but there's been nothing definitive kind of stating as such or or against it so uh i strongly suspect that it is cast uh the frame is but uh in my view a, a good strong gun should have a forged frame is it necessary no because nowadays with uh, the, the the i guess the metallurgy and uh technology uh that metal that metallurgy technology allows for us to kind of make somewhat strong cast uh, parts. Uh, so some guns can get away with it. A lot of uh, Bull Armory lower end 1911s, they are using uh, cast frames. Uh, they call it precision cast. Um, this one is forged. Uh, and I wanted to talk about that because a lot of people, they assume that, uh, well, it's a Turkish gun is cheap because it's made of cheap parts. This, this has a forged frame, just as all of the Springfield Armory 1911s, the lowest level non GI Springfield Armory 1911 is the garrison. Uh, so it's, it's the cheapest price. It's the lowest on the totem pole. It has a forged frame. Uh, in fact, I compare this directly to the garrison. Uh, the garrison is MS, uh, I guess the, I think the garrison's MSRP is eight ninety nine. Uh, I got this for four sixty. So it has a lot of the same features as the garrison. Um, it has some that the garrison does not, um, the rail, um, the undercut here. Um, so it has an ambidextrous, uh, uh, safety there. Um, it has front slide serrations, sights are the same. Everything else is the same. The grips, these, these are aftermarket grips. Uh, and of course, I, I, if I hadn't said it already, the rail, uh, the the garrison so it has so both of them do not have uh no, neither of them have the front uh checkering or serrations or anything uh this one has vertical serrations the garrison has checkering so there is that the garrison also has a match barrel uh, this one does not um but you're getting a lot of the features of the garrison in this gun um, with it being 
a little under half of the price of a garrison. Uh, so the garrisons that I were look, that I was looking at online, and I'm talking online. I'm not talking at a local gun store where no one else can can see unless you live in that particular town. Uh, I'm talking online where everyone can see and kind of present as as a good uh, uh, price that someone may or may not, uh, you know, think is 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 good. You know, it's it's all subjective, right? But in the end. I I never the lowest priced uh, garrison that I saw was six ninety nine. The highest price garrison I saw was right under a thousand dollars. Um, and so I was looking, and the only reason I didn't pull the trigger on, and and I wasn't really looking for a garrison. I wanted something that was a little bit higher on the totem pole as far as Springfield Armory 9-11s go. Uh, but right now we're still in those COVID times, and everything is kind of nasty as far as the gun market is concerned. Uh, so everything's a lot higher than it should be, um, including ammo, anything related to guns. Uh, is is usually harder to find and is more expensive uh magazines ammo the guns themselves um as well a lot of places aren't stocked up as well as they were before covid so uh my main problem was find finding an actual gun that i could buy that was decently priced and a lot of them were out of stock you know, including garrisons. So I, I got fed up and I said, well, I want something and I don't want to wait six months for, for it, for it to, you know, be available to me. So I decided to kind of compromise a bit. And so I started looking at these guns and looking at the reputations of them via other people's uh, reviews and i wanted to talk about the fact that um i saw a lot of uh so so there is there is there is bias when it comes to 1911s because someone who owns a less you know bayer uh or a dan wesson or any of those other higher end guns wilson combat uh, they have those and then they expect all other 1911s to to be equivalent and i think that's bullshit um i there are tiers of 1911s and for instance this gun should not be compared to no wilson wilson combat or no dan wessons or anything like that it's just fucking stupid and i don't know why people do that whether or not it's a whether or not it's a production gun or not yeah i know that there's different types of 1911s uh, even in the higher tiers, you know, you got custom, you got semi-custom, you got uh, production, right? Uh, this gun should not be compared to any Dan Wesson. It's just point blank. Uh, why would you do that? Um, only gun snobs do that. And, and they do that probably for a reason. They do that because they want you to feel like you have an inferior product and you know what in my opinion a gun has to be able to be dependable that's all it has to be it doesn't have to meet some subjective standard it doesn't have to meet the standard of a custom or semi-custom gun it doesn't have to meet uh, uh i guess the same specifications and and make up as a, a 1700 dollar production gun it doesn't, you know, it's like, that's an apples and orange comparison. You compare this gun to uh, something that either has like parts or you compare it to price. So if you compare it to price, this is hands down the best gun for its price. It's definitely better than a Rock Allen Armory 1911s. I have three of them, you know, and the Rock Allen Armory guns, they fill a niche. Um, and I'm not saying that they're, they're bad. Um, 
again, I'm speaking from my owner perspective. I own three of them, but this gun is its fitment is better. Its finish is better. Uh, the metallurgy is better. Um, and it's all doing that and still offering this same uh, price. You know, it's like the value of the gun is 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 it may be 460 but it, you would never know it just looking at this um i don't see anything wrong with this gun there is some some machining and and in this range of gun whether or not it's the the tier or the price range you're gonna see that um but i haven't noticed any issues whatsoever in regards to dependability uh, and I'm still shooting so so that the round count is going to grow as we kind of get used to this gun and shoot it for for uh, for training and for for fun, you know, so uh, um, yes, it's 45 ACP and the price of 45 ACP is not exactly cheap right now, but I will continue to try and shoot it and shoot the cheaper ammo through it uh, to try and get the round counts in. Um, so one thing I didn't notice with this particular gun, um, I had to change the, uh, the, uh, the magazine release button because it was not meshing well with Wilson combat mags or anything that was not that that's not OEM. So it comes with two Metgar mags. Uh, those mags did not have a problem with the OEM mag catch, but I bought seven round GI mags that didn't agree with it and Wilson combat mags. Um, the mag that this gun came with, uh, is an act mag. Um, and this gun accepted that mag without issue. So I'm not sure what was going on there, but it's a known issue and it's fixed already. All I did was I kind of researched and saw that other people were having a problem and saw that some people uh, offered a fix and, and tried to fix and it worked. And the fix was to order a Wilson Combat uh, magazine release. Um, it's uh, profiled a little bit differently to accept, uh, to better accept magazines, uh, all types of magazines. And so uh, we've been running it and we've been having no issue with that. Um, I can't think of any other issue with this gun. Uh, that's the only issue I had. Now, uh, we do want to talk about this ammo here because there is another another issue, but I don't think it's inherent with the, only this gun because it happened with both of these. And uh, it is that we mentioned earlier that uh, we were having failures to uh, to feed uh, JHP. Um, specifically, we had issues with, this is Underwood. Uh, for this particular gun, uh, this this gun does not like Underwood at all. Uh, so, in my targets here, when I went to the range yesterday, I have notes on the back. This, <clears throat> these are not so important because I wasn't shooting for accuracy. I was just trying to get some experience in in shooting JHP through this this particular gun here. Um, so we shot Underwood 230 grain plus P JHP rated for a thousand feet per second. It is, uh, Underwood item 334. So not this one. It's, it's not as hot as this one, but it was choking. So we shot one, we shot that whole box out of this gun with different mags. So we tried Wilson combat mags, one Wilson combat mag, seven rounds filled so I filled it with eight rounds and the gun did not like it uh, so I'm not sure if that's a a mag issue it probably was because it 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 fed fine after I stripped around out for this particular gun uh, so with that seven rounds worth of a uh, Wilson combat mag uh, we had two failure to, to fires uh, to failure to feeds um then we tried with the same gun seven rounds uh f a full mag of uh gi mag 
uh, we had three failures to feed. Same ammo, just a different mag. And then we tried, we had six rounds of Underwood left. And so we put those six rounds in to the Megar mag, the OEM mag that the gun comes with. And we had three failures to, uh, to feed. We had three FTFs. So, uh, five, so we had out of 20, we had eight failures to, to feed, uh, with that ammo. So the question is, it was this an issue with the gun? And now that I've shot ammo through it, um, I want to say no, but I guess one thing I didn't document was that the last at the last range visit, we fired some of this and this is plus P 230 grain federal HST and uh, we shot a half a box of that between both guns and we did have several failures to feed out of both uh, and then we shot Remington uh, HTP maybe 20 rounds and maybe four or five of those between both guns uh, had a uh, FTS uh, so it's very and and going into this I knew that uh, 1911s they tend at least 45 ACP they tend to have issues accepting uh, JHP and and it, it's a general it is a generally well-known fact that that's that's what happens you know so you seeing some people on reddit or the, the 1911 forums saying otherwise saying well that gun sucks because it won't take jhp that's 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 actually bullshit uh you can you can look through any of those forums and any of those reddits and you can see uh subreddits and you can see where people have actually uh posted kind of you know post for posted for posted for help um asking or kind of sharing okay well my 45 acp 1911 is having problems feeding uh, uh jacketed hollow points so you know it's not just a fact you know a lot of people say well that's a cheap gun that's why you're having a problem no it's happening with more expensive guns it's happening generally all over the place it happens with damn wessons and all of that so the first thing they usually recommend is well you need to return it back to the maker uh, so that they can kind of take a look and i'm like what the fuck man I was like, look, no, I'm not going to do that, you know, because that's what I did. I shared out and then I got some responses that said, well, you need to rely more on a Rock Island Armory because they don't have issues. I'm like, are you crazy? Uh, they all have issues for one, but why would why would I I give up this gun and go back to a 19 uh, go back to a Rock Island Armory when this is clearly a better better product um and i'm not going to kind of do that you know go back to rock island army or tout them or kind of say well they're the better product because they don't choke on uh on 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 45 acp jacket at hollow points um when that's not the case you know it's like wh where are where are these guys coming up with some of these these answers or or assistance or help or advice um because they'll 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 recommend one thing or they'll say one thing and I can immediately go and do some researching and find that in it like a hard counter to their argument or their advice. Uh, so we know that the item uh, 334 of the of the Underwood did not agree with this gun. And I did not shoot that same ammo from this gun. I shot 332, which is hotter from this gun. Same probably bullet profile and everything. Uh, but um, so the ramp profiles are probably different on these two guns as well. So um, so the second target I got here, I shot 32 rounds of varying uh, ammo types, makes and models. 
no jams between uh, and, you know with this gun um using so at this point i was i'd started just using the wilson combat maggot so i shot 45 acp uh inceptor uh, so this particular round is not JHP and I wanted to test it anyways because it's a, vi uh, a viable alternative to JHP. So it's round nose, but it's got these flukes on the, on the projectile. I've shot this before out of 380. I haven't shot it out of nine mil, uh, but I haven't had any issues with this whatsoever. And this is, this is self-defense ammo. Uh, it's small for caliber, uh, light for caliber, 118 grain, uh, but it didn't jam the gun up. I shot the Hornady here, 185 grain FTX JHP. It didn't choke the gun, no jams. Um, and then I shot a, a several mags of PMC bronze. So this is not... SD ammo, but it is JHP. At this point, I was just trying to get a feel for what the gun would accept. Uh, at this point, I might even consider using this as self-defense ammo. I just need something that's not hardball at this point. Uh, so we have several alternatives. Any one of these three could be good alternatives uh, out of this gun. So the next target relates to this gun. So this is a commander sized uh, 45 ACP. Um, it's of the two, uh, I'm not sure which has a better fit and, and finish. I think this one has is tighter. Uh, there's less rattle and there's hardly any rattle and the slide is rock. Uh, it, there is no, uh, there's no player movement in the slide, no matter how you manipulate the slide. Um, so out of the two guns, this is the tighter gun. Uh, but I am more accurate with this gun, with this gun, uh, probably because the sight radius on this is smaller and it feels lighter. It's not only because of the fact that this is a five inch gun here. I think that this one has just flat out has less mass. Uh, so with this gun I've always had a problem with feeding and this one has a polished feed ramp that one does as well but it is it's like a the, it's brushed this one is straight up polished you can kind of look at your 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 face in it you know uh, but over time I you know that's kind of worn down and it probably might be in need of another polishing um so with this gun we shot two mags eight round mags using the wilson combat mags of the pmc bronze 185 uh, grain jhp there were no feed issues uh, and then we shot some of the inceptor 118 grain uh, uh frangible ammo there were no ftfs uh, and then we had one ftf when shooting eight rounds of this um but it could have been me um uh what do you call it uh limp wristing because <sighs> yeah this is this is the hottest ammo that i have ever shot and uh, i've usually been able to shoot hot ammo without issues um yesterday it was tearing up this portion of my uh my hand uh so there are no sharp edges when I when I feel around here, but with that ammo, it was tearing it up. You know, those soft edges were becoming hard and I can feel a hardness right there. So that was probably making it to my hands. This side is not as bad. Uh, but yeah, um, so, and that was, ha that happened during the latter part of the, the eight round mags i actually had to stop at round four because it was <laughs> it was starting to hurt my hand to shoot this thing uh 
Now, the one thing I didn't do is I didn't shoot that same ammo through that gun. So I'm kind of wondering how between the two guns, which one would shoot it, that ammo better. And it, it will probably be that because it's got more, it's got more mass to kind of absorb that uh, recoil. But um, for the most part, there were no feed issues. Just that one failure to, to feed. And I swear up and down, you know, that I, I think it was because of uh, me, uh, limp resting uh just trying to struggle with that 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 hot ammo um so right now it seems like we have a good batch of ammo so i can go through some of these uh i shot a majority of this i still have some uh some underwood in the safe there for both types both items uh what i can do is Take note, I already know which ones shoot well. This, so the Inceptor, the Hornady, Critical Defense, and the uh, PMC Bronze, those are good to go out of either gun. Um, so I could order some more for carry um, because I know, you know, I've done my testing now and I kind of know which is, which are which. Um, of which I know which are good and which are not good for the gun. Um, so I guess the argument that I also saw on, on the forums and on, on the internet is that I shouldn't have to kind of determine which it, you know, the thinking for some folks was that 1911 should be able to accept all ammo, but historically that's never been the case. Uh, if I have to buy a $2,500 1911 so that I can not have to worry about that. I think that's bullshit. I shouldn't have to spend that much money to worry about that. So that's that in itself is not the answer. For me, the answer has always been that you should when, when you buy a 1911 and you're and you're wanting to carry it, you're always going to have to and this is not just with 1911. This is with everything. Before you you settle on a certain carry ammo you need to shoot that to make sure that that gun's not going to have issues so this this isn't always a 1911 thing this could happen with any gun um you know some of the guns i carried that are polymer guns uh uh the springfield armory xd9s uh the springfield armory xd45s the uh grand power p11 all of those choked on the carry carry the carry ammo i was testing uh what was it remington 185 grain hdp uh jhp they were choking on that and it, they weren't choking on the projectile itself and 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 having failure to feeds because of the uh the projectile you know and that that the hollow point opening they were choking on the case because uh i found that uh remington through those three guns on all three experiences, uh, the the hang up was the case, right? The the that that lip right here. Uh, if it's not within spec, it's gonna hang and and choke and not be able to be properly rammed into the chamber. Um, and and that's that was a recurring theme with that ammo no matter what gun it was. So it's not always a gun issue. It's not always a makeup issue. It's not always a cheapness issue. It's not always a buy only US issue, you know, because that type of shit more than likely, and I, I have read of people having US made guns that have feed issues. And, you know, the counter for the gun snobs would be, well, no gun is perfect. Well, yeah no gun is perfect you should have led with that uh instead of using it as like a, a crutch to you know to for your argument to lean on right so <sighs> you should always shoot the carry ammo first to test it out to make sure that it's reliable in the particular gun that you're using so that's one so for 1911s especially 45 acps you want to make sure that your gun feeds that ammo properly because it's a it's it's always been a known issue and these guns are 100 plus years old in design uh 
they've always had issues with feeding hollow points. So, and there is no one standard for uh, the projectiles on, you know, with 45 ACP. So the profiles are going to be different depending on the type of ammo it is and who makes it uh, and its its design. So that's why you're seeing like some some ammo having issues with these, you know, uh, in feeding these guns. But how do I, did I say that right? That's why you're seeing certain ammo types having issues, you know, when being used in certain guns because of the nose profile. Uh, and you're not gonna be able to get around that. I don't believe in gun makers. Um, I don't think it's fair to, to kind of make a blanket statement saying that all guns should be able to accept all types of ammo when there's really no standard. Yes, Glocks never have issues, but the price for that is that the tolerances are loose. And with most 1911s, everyone wants tight tolerances. You know, you, there has to be a balance between everything. And uh, that balance currently is a money thing. You know, um, the only way you're going to kind of get that balance, not just, you know, user A on Reddit might say, well, I've never had an issue of JHP of 40, you know, on 45 ACP with my particular 1911, but you're, that's a sample of one, you know, uh, you don't see a lot of people kind of posting about this and, and there, there are plenty of 1911, uh, uh, gurus out there that will kind of get out their calipers and they'll start kind of measuring between the two trying to pretend it's a it's, it's it's like an exact science but it's not it will never be unless every single maker is forced to use a standard there there are always going to be variances yes um they're they're all 1911s but you have different people making them using different standards uh some of them, you know, the hand fit ones might be okay, but then you have to factor in who's, you know, whose hands are those that are, that are fitting that gun and what experience level do they have? Um, you know, everyone in the, in everyone on the internet that has a 1911, they want to be a, a gunsmith and they want to start filing on shit and, that in itself doesn't make you a gunsmith. You can do it, yeah, but that doesn't mean that you're a gunsmith. That just means you're you're a bubba, um, uh, grinding on something or, or filing on something, and you're not really knowing what you're doing. So, and and, and I, re, I mean, in the end, that includes those custom gun makers. You have to have an extreme trust in a gun maker's name. Because there's not probably just one guy making those guns. There's a team of folks and whoever owns that business uh, has to ensure that every single person on that team has a similar experience level enough to where, I mean, I mean, one, one mishap could ruin that business's name, right? So it's less of an issue when you're starting out from down low in, in the end. Uh, you know, I've heard some argument, you know, some guys make the argument that, well, I'll buy this gun knowing that it's cheap because if I mess it up, I, I, I haven't thrown a lot of money out, you know, out the window. You know, you know, I, I, I have a, I make a six figure salary and $460 is still a lot of money to me. It's because I grew up next to poor, so I know the value of money. Even though I make more than than I ever have in my life right now, I know the value of money. And so not everyone is going to be willing to kind of say, well, uh, I'm going to I'm going to buy the most expensive because that means it's the best. That's not always the case. You could buy a damn Wesson and still have issues. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they, they always think, well, you get what you pay for. And I, I fucking hate, I hate that saying because it's, it's always, it's, it, it, it excludes a lot of things. 
you know, it, it's a blanket statement. It's one of those, those statements that that, you know, people always use because uh, I don't know. It's like they they hide, they use it to hide uh, the fact that not all 1911s are created equal. And then if someone, you know, kind of mentions them, well, you know, there's a gun out there that is equivalent this, you know, to your gun, to your $2,000 gun that is half the price and it has a similar makeup and they'll, they'll counter that. Well, you get what you pay for. And, you know, it's like, well, what does that mean? Because I'm not having any issues with my cheap ass gun and it's still equivalent to what you have, you know? So it's like they use that, but they don't really offer any, any tangible touch in your hand, malleable in your face evidence that you can kind of use in an objective fashion you know so it's like it's it's crazy um and and none of this is you know none of what we're discussing is is going off on a tangent um i knew going in that this was going to be a long video because i've i have several videos that are marked private right now covering everything here i just did not like the way uh, that it turned out you know that the video turned out so it's like it's sitting in that limbo in that private area in on youtube because i don't want to release it to the public you know this one's a far better video because i'm covering everything here um so so this gun it, it did well uh the first time in a while it's done well and a lot of this probably had to do with the fact that maybe i wasn't you know at one point I was having issues with recoil. You know, I um, I do believe I'm starting to develop a light arthritis, so my hands don't particular my hands don't particularly handle uh, recoil all that well anymore. Uh, plus, I am not I'm not the biggest guy in the world. I'm not slight either, but um, my wrist strength could be in need of improving. But it's a little bit late now, especially since I'm um, having to deal with the uh, arthritis you know so it's like i always have to kind of shore up my wrist and shooting to make sure that when i'm having these issues it's not related to limp wristing and i've had problems in the past where i thought that uh, i'm shooting a gun and it's having issues and i'm sitting here saying it's not me it's not me and then i go and look at the the video footage later of my hat camera and i'm i'm looking at myself and i'm limp wristing or i'm flinching you know, so so it's like all of those people that you always see on the forum saying, you know, when they have a problem and they say, well, I've been shooting for 30 years. I, I don't lip wrist. I know what lip wristing is. I'm not lip wristing. And then you watch a video and they're limp wristing. I saw one a couple of weeks ago on, on, on the Reddit uh, subreddit uh, 1911 group. Uh, someone did the exact same thing. Um, and then. It, the, the cool thing is he came back later and and said that it was him uh and i had asked him i said well is anyone else shooting the gun having the same issue and he, he said yeah he said he had three other people shooting the gun um they were all having the same issue and the, my first thought was that okay it's not limp wristing then if, if all those people are having issues he came back later and he said all of them were limp wristing including him and I was like, oh, shit. Okay. And I, and I thought I was like, okay, that explains it. That's you would, you know, the, the assumption is that if you hand someone else a gun, they're not going to be limp wristing because you're handing it to someone who might be just as knowledgeable or maybe even more, more knowledgeable than you. But if you're handing it to someone who has less experience than you, well, there's a high chance that they're going to be limp wristing as well. Um, so. And, and you got to factor in the ammo, too. If you're shooting hot-ass ammo uh, and people aren't used to that, that recoil, yeah, they, they might have issues and it might contribute. You know, if you're not lip-wristing shooting this shit, you damn sure are going to be lip-wristing or, or there's a high poss higher possibility with higher power, higher power ammo. So uh, before this gets too long, we want to move on here because I have two other targets shooting nine millimeter jhp because i i was curious i was like okay well i have some uh i have some jhp uh 
and some self-defense ammo for nine millimeter and i have nine millimeter uh 1911s that i have considered carrying uh they're this size uh they're mid-size they're commander size and i was curious as to whether or not i would have similar issues that i did with the 45 acp feeding or misfeeding so i shot a rock ultra 1911 commander um and i put eight rounds of you know they, they have 10 rounds 10 round ammo i mean uh 10 round mags uh but for the sake of conserving some of this expensive ass uh jhp uh we opted for eight rounds uh and we shot through uh wilson combat uh nine millimeter magazines so um there were no ftfs there was one fte here but it was using the the frangible heavy was it heavy duty 100 grain frangible ammo um one thing that's gonna happen occasionally with uh that light for caliber ammo is you you're more than likely gonna see more ftes so there was one in that there were no no there were no failures to feed and then we picked up the TAC Ultra 9mm Commander. And we had no failures to feed or extracts. Pretty much shooting all of this same ammo here. So we now, because of that, we now have the option of carrying those commanders as well. Those 9mm. I can shoot those better and a lot of those are fast shots mag dumps grab a chart here and we said that we weren't going to use these these were just kind of tracking where we were shooting when kind of doing reliability tests but both of these were mag dumps <laughs> and yes they were from five yards but that that shit is tight in fact that's not bad either this one is was a little bit scattered we were using the uh browning jhp there but this was with the uh the heavy duty and this is with the winchester silver tip that's 115 grain so yeah we after shooting the nine millimeters I'm kind of open to carrying them as well and I am less locked in with the type of ammo you know to use with those guns because uh they're they're just generally accepting they accept it all but anyways there you go um